When I started writing essays, I had no clue how to format bibliographies and citations. I'd never heard of citation styles or style manuals. So what I did is just find a journal article or an essay or a book and copied the citation style from that source. Eventually I noticed that there were different citation styles, but I still had no clue why one was used instead of another. In this video, I want to give you a survey of the different citation styles that you might encounter in academic writing and some tips on what styles to use and what style manuals you should have on your bookshelf. Let's start with the MLA style. MLA stands for Modern Language Association. It's actually a pretty recent citation format. The MLA style manual is only in its third edition as of this recording, with the first edition in 1985. This is the most commonly used style for academics working in the humanities, like English literature, literary criticism, media and cultural studies, and a hodgepodge of other arts disciplines. In the examples I used in the plagiarism videos, I was using APA style for the most part. MLA style is a lot like the APA style in that it uses in-text citations, but an important difference is that MLA uses the author page number system rather than the author date system. In this example, the quote is from a book by William Wordsworth, and the citation is Wordsworth 263 where 263 is the page number from that source. Here's what the source reference would look like in the bibliography, which in MLA style is titled a Works Cited. Every bibliography style requires similar information, author, title, publication date, where it was published, and so on. But the specific formatting will be different in each style. Here, for example, the date of publication comes at the end, but in the APA style, as we'll see, the date comes right after the author's name. APA stands for American Psychological Association. The first APA style manual came out in 1927 and was designed to serve the writing needs of psychologists and anthropologists. But the APA style is now widely used across the social sciences, and there are branches of the humanities that use this style as well. If you were to write the Wordsworth citation in APA style, it would look like this. APA style uses the author and the date of publication rather than the author and page number though page number references are often included as well, like here. APA uses more commas to separate the elements of the citation than the MLA style does, and it uses that P dot preface to indicate page numbers, where MLA doesn't require this. A student once asked me why APA uses the author date system and MLA uses the author page number system. I hadn't a clue, so I went and researched it. The basic idea, as far as I can tell, is that there is a presumption about what kinds of information are most important for someone writing in the humanities versus someone writing in the social sciences. In the social sciences, more often you're citing the conclusions of the most current sources that bear on your work. So the date of publication is emphasized, and details of where in the source the quote is located less so. In the humanities, on the other hand, it's assumed that your work is engaging with the ideas of other writers that appear at specific places in their works. So the precise location of the ideas within a given work is emphasized more than the date of publication of the work. All right, moving on. Here's what the bibliography entry would look like in an APA formatted paper. Here you would title the bibliography references rather than works cited. And notice that you only give the initial for the first name of the author and the date follows in brackets. Okay, next on our list is the CSE style, which can be quite different from the MLA and APA styles. CSE stands for Council of Scientific Editors, and this citation style is commonly found in the natural sciences. Originally, the editors were mostly biologists, and the format was focused on life sciences like microbiology, and zoology, and plant sciences, and so on. But now it's used across a wide array of physical and biological sciences. CSE format actually supports two quite different citation styles. The first is just a variant of the author date system that we've seen before. Here's an example. There's nothing too unusual here. The second is the citation sequence system, and this is different. Here the citation is labeled with a superscripted number. It looks like a footnote reference. And each new citation is numbered sequentially. So the next would be two, followed by three, and so on. Sometimes the number won't be superscripted. It'll be just at regular size placed in brackets at the, at the location of the citation. Obviously with a system like this, the bibliography has to reflect the citation sequence. So each bibliographic entry is labeled by the corresponding citation number. But if you refer to the same reference more than once, you use the same number. Here's an example. The citations are superscripted. The first sentence cites references one and four. The second sentence cites reference four again. 
A bibliography might look like this. Each reference is numbered, so the numbers 1 and 4 in the document would refer to references 1 and 4 in this reference list. This list also illustrates the CSE citation format for bibliographic entries, which is quite different from, say, the APA format. Just to note a few of these differences, here you only give initials for the first names of the authors, you don't put spaces between them, you don't capitalize the names of journal articles or put them in quotes, you just capitalize the first letter of the title, and you also abbreviate the journal titles. This is the sort of thing you just have to consult a style manual to figure out. Or, as most people do, just use a representative journal article or essay as a model when formatting your own essay. Okay, our last citation style we'll look at is the Chicago style, sometimes called CMS or CMOS, after the initials of the Chicago Manual of Style. It's named after Chicago since it's been published by the University of Chicago Press since the first edition came out way back in 1906. The Chicago Manual of Style is a beast, almost a thousand pages long. It's not just a style manual for essays. It also has sections on editorial practice and English grammar and usage, and it covers style and format issues for all kinds of publications, including books for non-academic audiences. The Chicago Style Manual is also used for some social science and humanities journals, so you might see this used in places where you'd otherwise see MLA or APA style used. Luckily, for students who need help writing research papers, there's an excellent and much shorter style guide written originally by Kate Turabian in 1937 that basically compiles all the relevant style rules that students would need to know. The book is called A Manual for Writers of Research Papers, Theses, and Dissertations, and it's been periodically revised over the years by various teams. This is sometimes called Turabian style, but it's really just the Chicago style edited and compiled for undergraduate and graduate students. What's distinctive about the Chicago style is that it supports two different reference styles and supports the mixing of those styles in the same publication. When most writers hear the term Chicago style, they think of a sequential numbering notes-based citation system, like the one illustrated here. The citations are numbered, and then the source information is given either in a footnote at the bottom of the page or an endnote at the end of the document. With this system, you can avoid having a separate bibliography section altogether. One of the advantages of a system like this is that the page isn't cluttered with citation information and it can make for a more pleasant reading experience. Now, although this is in some respects the stereotypical Chicago style system, the Chicago style manual also supports inline citation styles like the MLA and APA styles, so it gets complicated explaining what makes the citation style distinct. For example, here is a citation system that the Chicago style also supports. On top, you've got a paragraph with some standard in-text citations. You've also got a reference to a footnote, footnote number 6. At the bottom of the page is footnote number 6, and in it you've got some commentary. These are sometimes called discursive notes to distinguish them from footnotes that just contain source information. And in the commentary, there's another in-text citation. And all of this is supported by the Chicago Manual of Style. So you can see that it encourages flexibility and mixing of citation styles which can come in handy for different purposes. Okay, that about wraps up this introduction to citation styles. Here's the summary table. What I would recommend for any student is to pick up a copy of a good style guide suitable to your discipline, because it'll make life easier for you in the end. Just Google any of these style names and you'll get lots of online resources. And if you go to Amazon, just search for these names and you'll get the style manuals themselves as well as a bunch of third-party style guides that are basically like dummies guides to a particular citation style, which can also be very helpful.